uh, trying to get them through school, uh, trying to uh, give them a life, maybe, uh, that we think they need. Uh, but sometimes uh, we take our eyes off uh, of yeah, the Lord right. in the hand, and that's when I uh, get myself uh, 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 yeah, we're this thing again. I find, oh, uh, I myself being afflicted uh, because of me, uh, not because of something the Lord yeah. done.
he holds the keys to the kingdom still today. While when that spirit moved in, when those disciples were up there in that upper room, you know, Peter was an awfully weak person. Naturally so. How many times did he fall and stumble? You know, when, God, when Jesus told him, the devil wants you, but I pray for you. Just hold on for a little while. Peter looked at him and said, I'll go with you into the prison right now. I'll go with you all the way to death. Yeah. And you know what? Jesus told me, no, as soon as I'm out of your sight, that you're going to fall down on your face. I'm going to hold on to what I'm teaching you here. Yeah, conversion. There's something different that's coming. Yeah. Amen. See, when they were around the Lord and they had their eyes on him, they were as strong as could be. Peter walked on water. Yeah. yeah. He was looking at the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. No. The waves began to crash. The lightning began to strike. And you know what? He took his eyes off the Lord for just a minute. And he fell straight under the water. Yeah. You know, that's the way that I am today. You know what? Uh, I remember when I was in high school, I was, I guess, in probably 10th grade, I just started driving. I wasn't in the church yet. Then, you know, we were born and raised up in Michigan. Oh, uh, I just thought, I was used to a whole lot of snow, Brother David. And, you know, I remember one time, man, there was a big storm that was coming. And I just wanted to hang out with my friends. And, you know what, my mom and dad, and no matter what was going on, they were dragging us out of bed and making us go to church, uh, you know, and I told Dad, it was a Saturday night, uh, Dad, I want to go and hang out with my friend, and he said, well, all right, they live about 10 miles away, across the town here, why the snow's coming, and we got to go to church, uh, we live close enough to church, uh, you can see it across the field, uh, from where we lived, and he said, uh, you better be here in the morning, uh, to go to church, and I'm like, yeah, uh, whatever, I'm going, I'll be here, sir. And you know, and you got his side, and your mind changes, and you don't think about those things. Well, you know, so I've been in plenty of snow. They don't shut school down up there. If it snows two feet, they'll shut the buses down. But they'll say, parents better get your kids here. All right. And you know what? It was just the way of life. And you know, I woke up that morning. It was the most snow I'd ever seen in my life. I had just a small little uh, uh, Grand Prix car, uh, and I thought, uh, oh my God, uh, there's no way. Uh, uh, even the police came out uh, and said, uh, no one's allowed uh, to be on the roads today uh, until uh, it just melts a little bit, and we can get the salt trucks out, uh, and I thought, uh, oh, my dad's going to kill me. Uh, you know what? Uh, we lived out in the country. Uh, it was just dirt roads everywhere. Uh, I thought, uh, you know, uh, my friend's dad from downstairs, uh, and he must have saw, uh, Looking pretty nervous. I don't think I'd ever talked to him before. And he just looked at me and he said, What's the matter? And I said, oh, My dad told me I've got to get home in time for church today. And he just said, Well, that car ain't going nowhere. He said, But if you need to get home, I'll get you home. And you know, I said, Okay. And we went out to his garage and he opened it up and he had a big monster truck sitting in the garage while we was as tall as me. I didn't know uh, that they even had the thing. And you know what? Uh, why we just climbed in there. And I uh, was scared to death. I was uh, probably 15 years old. Uh, but uh, as he was flying along, uh, we were going everywhere, uh, all over the road. I couldn't even tell where the road was. Uh, my mud, I'm just holding on. I'm scared to death here. Uh, but I looked over at him, and he's laughing. And he's saying, Whoa! Out of the driveway, and my mom and dad uh, were waiting on me, uh, ready for church. And you know, I thought, oh, well, oh, I'll see you later. And I didn't think twice. And you know, he just pulled out of the driveway and took off out of there. Oh, oh, oh what I'm talking about. Oh, a captain, oh, that knows what he's doing today. I know, I found myself, oh, I had a sinking ship one time oh, when I was 16 years old. How all the waves were crashing, brother David. Oh, all around me, and I didn't know what to do. 
I looked out my window and I was scared to death. Oh, Lord, I'm going to die and go to hell because I don't know you. But you know, I looked over at him and he was standing. Oh, I'm right there. I steer in the boat. I said, it's all right. Oh, I'm the one that they control in the water. Oh, I'm the one. Oh, I do. Oh, I command the wind. Oh, I just take this place. Oh, I come under me. Oh, And in my darkest hour, when I was afraid, and I didn't know where to turn, I just looked at him and he was smiling at me. And you know what he just said? Everything's going to be all right. Everything. Much like that old captain on that hijacked plane that I think I preached here before. You know, he was, they were flying along, and the plane had been hijacked, and Maybe, you know, it being 9 11 got me thinking about this the other day. Yeah. But you know, they had took off and somebody hijacked them there, and this was, I think, over in Egypt. And the captain just comes over the loudspeaker and says, Why wow, the plane's been hijacked? And they told us to fly to a destination that we can't reach. Yeah. Why do we don't have enough gas here in this thing? Yeah. He said, So just buckle up and stay tuned and see if we can land this thing safely. And you know, all about an hour or two went by, and the captain came over and he said, we're about to lose an engine. Put your seatbelt on, we're all over the middle of the ocean with nowhere to land. And you know, he said, I just, uh, a few minutes later, uh, one of the engines went out on that plane. He said they could hear it right outside his window. Now why when that thing was just still uh, flying along there, uh, and you know what? Uh, uh, I wasn't much longer. Uh, about a half hour, the captain said, Oh, we're about to lose the other engine, and I've got nowhere to put it down here. Oh, so just buckle up. If you've got loved ones, I call them if you can. If you've got service, if not, I don't know what to do here. And you know what? Oh, I, oh, this was a oh, little woman telling the story. I read it in the newspaper oh, one time, and you know what she said? All I heard of her husband. I was a missionary preacher and was down in Ethiopia uh, trying uh, to get back home. Now I you know and she said all I heard uh, was him take his seatbelt off and stand up and get in the middle of the plane and say oh, I we don't have oh, any more time here oh, in this world. He said but I know the woman oh, why you hold those things in the palm of his hand and she said Oh, he just began uh, walking up and down uh, oh, the aisle preaching. Uh, and she said, oh, I want a little uh, flight attendant. Uh, uh, come running up the highway uh, and just shouting uh, and praising the name of God. Uh, and you know, uh, about that time, uh, oh, that other engine, uh, it went out. Uh, and he said, uh, oh, the whole plane uh, oh, was silent. Uh, it's like they were floating uh, in midair. As it started coming down, oh, he was preaching uh, harder and harder. Uh, oh, repent ye of uh, the kingdom of heaven. Oh, is that yeah, yeah, right yeah. now? Oh, we may not have uh, tomorrow. Uh, she said, uh, you know, uh, the last thing uh, she ever saw of uh, her husband. Oh, when that nose uh, hit the water, oh, he was standing uh, in the middle of the aisle. Oh, and his heart stretched out. Uh, as hard as he can preach, Brother David, uh, you know, uh, we don't know uh, what tomorrow brings. Uh, what I got right now, and I've got a father uh, oh, that's waiting on me uh, on the other side. I may uh, I'm not make it home tonight. But you know, I have a faith in the one by who came and preached and said, I have overcome the whole world. Is what he told Peter before he went about down and prayed. The way of the world was on him, but he had overcome it. And he was ready, Brother David. Yeah. And he came and died for me and for each and every one of you. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm going to get out of the way. Uh, God well. I'm very glad God to meet you. Yeah. Come on. Everybody pray for Brother Clyde. Yeah.